So this is something I've been planning on doing for some time now, and hopefully this is evident by the title of this video. Uh, I'm going to be doing a garage attic lift upgrade. And there's also going to be a giveaway component here as well to one of my subscribers who comments on this video. So first let's talk quickly about what this is, and then we'll do a quick discussion with regard to how the giveaway is going to work. So first off, I went ahead and I ordered a brand new electric cable hoist. So this is another cable hoist that runs on 110 volts or 120 volts. Uh, my existing lift is, or the cable hoist, sorry, is a 440 pound or an 880 pound cable hoist. So that will do 440 pounds configured with the line directly down. And it will do 880 pounds with the line down to the catch block and back up to uh, the attachment point on the lift. This new cable hoist is a 1,000 kilogram cable hoist. So this will do 1,100 pounds directly connected or 2,200 pounds down through the catch block and back up. So this thing will be able to handle a lot more weight. And it's not that I'm actually going to be lifting any more weight than I usually lift with my existing hoist. I just figured that this would be a great opportunity to, one, take some of the money that I'm making now from YouTube, because I do make, you know, a small amount of money a month from the ad revenue. Uh, and off that, you know, over the course of four or five months, I was able to save up and spend a couple hundred bucks on this thing. Uh, but it's also going to be an opportunity for me now to give back to you guys who uh, support me by subscribing and interacting with me in the comments on my videos. So before we get into opening this box and having a look at this shiny new uh, electric cable hoist. Uh, one thing I want to do is just quickly talk about how this giveaway contest is going to work. So what I plan on doing is when I replace the cable hoist that's currently in my system with this new cable hoist, I want to give my existing cable hoist away to one of my subscribers who comments on this video saying what they would do with that lift, how they would use it, or what it could be of use to them for. Uh, so the way this will work is one, you'll have to be subscribed to the channel. Two, you'll have to comment on this video and say what you'd like to use the lift for or how the lift could be of use to you. And what will happen is in, I'll say, let's call it January sometime. Well, that way we'll give this uh, video a chance to get a few views and get some attention so that way we can get some more entries. Uh, I'll go ahead and I'll randomly draw from the comments section one person who we will send that uh, the existing cable hoist to. So that's the 440, 880 pound Princess Auto electric cable hoist. I'll then verify that person. I'll just get them to message me via Instagram or some other means if they don't use Instagram. And then what I'll do is I'll get their address and I'll go ahead and I'll ship that out to them. So I'm going to cover the shipping cost on this as well. I put another couple hundred bucks aside for my YouTube earnings so I could cover that cost. And this competition or contest, we'll say, the giveaway, is going to be open to anyone in the world. So I know like the majority of my viewers come from North America and whatnot, but if you're in Germany, you're in Thailand, you're in Japan, you're in Australia, uh, this contest is open to you as well. And I'm going to foot the bill for the shipping on this uh, up to a certain point. Let's call it like $250 Canadian. Um, so with that said, let's go ahead and have a look at this new cable hoist. Okay, let's tear this bad boy open. So first off, I'll show you guys a picture of the existing cable hoist. I'll show it later on the screen here now. Uh, the Princess Auto website, we'll say. And now I'll overlay the new one. And I got this on eBay because it was the best deal I found. So you can get these on Amazon, but this 1,000 kilogram one, you know, 1,100 slash 2,200 pound lift, uh, was around $400. I got it on eBay for a lot cheaper than that. And you'll see that in the, uh, the overlay I put up here now. So let's get to open up this box. So right on top of the box here, we've got our catch block. This one looks to be a bit more robust than the, uh, the one that's currently on the lift. And rightfully so, because this thing is about uh, two and a half times the capacity of the existing lift that I have. So we'll do a quick side-by-side -side comparison of each of the components now when I pull down the old uh, cable hoist as well. So we've got that. Here's a quick little set of instructions. We've 
got the bracketry. Now this stuff isn't going to fit on my lift because I use a 2x4 piece of steel or a steel tube beam, 3 16 inch wall. Uh, so I'll be reusing my, uh, my bracketry. So there's the brackets. I'll give those away with the, uh, the lift that I give away or the hoist I give away as well. So here we go. We've got some kind of lifting strap by the look of it. That's what we'll call it for now. And then we've got the big bad boy here itself. This thing is a lot bigger than the one I currently have. And it's heavy. Oh, baby. Woo, Nelly. This is a big boy. Let's see if I can get this up into the styrofoam itself. Everything about this cable hoist is definitely a lot more beefy than the one I had. The motor size, the, uh, the actual cable itself, it's all really, really nice and beefy. So now that we've got this cable hoist unboxed, uh, let's go ahead and discuss quickly what it is that we're actually going to upgrade with the existing system. So obviously, first and foremost, a new higher capacity lift is going to be put in. Uh, the second thing I'm going to actually replace is the U-bolt on top of the current lift platform. So I'll quickly take you over for a quick look at that and we'll talk about what we're going to do there. So one of the things I'm definitely going to be replacing with the higher capacity lift, and like I mentioned, I'm not actually going to be lifting anything a whole lot bigger really. I'm still going to keep it to the loads that I currently lift, but in case I do end up lifting something bigger or to just add that extra bit of peace of mind, uh, with regard to what could potentially be weak points in this lift system, I'm going to replace this U-bolt. So this U-bolt here is, let me kind of convert this over, is 7 millimeters thick. So it's a 7 millimeter U-bolt. If I convert that to imperial units, it's about a quarter inch, a little over a quarter inch. It says 930 seconds, so you know, just slightly, one thirty second over a quarter inch. So I'm probably going to look at something a bit beefier, probably like a half inch thick U-bolt. So that is definitely one of the things we'll be replacing. So now what I'm going to do is we're going to go ahead and pop up overhead. We'll have a look at a couple of things I'm looking at doing up there with regard to this upgrade project as well. And then we'll get down to business. So let's get up overhead and then let's get started. So now we're up in the attic portion of my garage and this is where I store a lot of stuff, you know, car tires, bicycles, bigger tools like table saws and miter saws, uh, furniture, my drill press is currently up here, uh, stuff like that. So just to recap, first off, we're going to replace this U-bolt with a much heavier U-bolt. So that's going to involve making these holes just a bit bigger so we can get a half inch U-bolt down through that instead of using a quarter inch U-bolt. Uh, the second thing then is going to be replacing the actual lift itself. So this is the Princess Auto 880 pound cable hoist that I'm going to be giving away to one of you guys, one of you subscribers who comments on this video. And then third, we're going to go ahead and give this beam a nice coat of uh, trend clad or rust oleum or something. This is just bare steel for the last four years. And so there's a few spots where there's a little bit of light surface rusting. Nothing structural is literally just surface rust. Uh, and I want to nip that in the bud now by giving that a good coat of paint so it's good forevermore kind of thing. So now that we know what we're going to be doing for this upgrade project, let's uh, head back downstairs and uh, get ready to get things started. So what I want to do first is I just want to pull the, uh, the old lift or the old cable hoist down from overhead. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let the lift down. I'll disconnect the cable that's connected to the top of the uh, lift platform itself. And then we'll take the hoist off of the beam up overhead and bring it down and have a look. So I'm thinking where these mounting holes are, for these brackets, I think this is going to be a lot wider than what's on top of the old smaller cable hoist. And if that's the case, then I'm going to need to make some new ones. So I'm going to go ahead and pop that hoist off the beam, bring it down. We'll just do a quick side-by-side -side comparison of these two hoists, and then uh, we'll talk about what we're going to need to do to get some new brackets to fit over the 2x4 beam overhead and also 
connected to the top of this hoist here. So let's go out and pull that one out. So I never bothered bringing the camera up overhead with me just because it's a bit of a pain. But as you can see here, there's a major size difference with regard to the 880 pound hoist versus the 2200 pound hoist. So now that we got these down, I can just quickly roll each of these over on the right side. So you can see where these brackets mounted previously. So I'm going to check and see if it's going to mount on this one here. And I'm not sure if they're going to, but let's double check and have a look. So as you can see, these brackets are not going to fit this lift. So I'm going to have to make some new brackets. So that being the case, I'm going to have to take a quick run of my, or one of my favorite stores, that being Princess Auto. They just built a brand new location here. So I can uh, pick up some steel because, you know, hindsight being 2020, I would have picked up the steel I would have thought I needed for this. But uh, hey, I'll just go to Princess Auto and buy a piece of steel and make it out of that. So, let's take a quick run to Princess Auto, we'll get some steel, and then we'll come back and we'll get started on making some new bracketry to attach the new lift to the beam overhead. One other quick thing I'm going to do now before I head up to Princess Auto, just so that this stuff is mostly dry by the time we get back, is I'm just going to pop it overhead, use some brake cleaner and a couple of rags to wipe down that post or the sort of the beam that the lift gets attached to and I'm going to hit it with some soft etching primer. When I get back that should be dry enough so I can put like a quick coat of trim clad on it and then that beam will be protected for you know the rest of my life anyways. So I'm going to pop up overhead, I'm not going to show you guys that. I'm going to then run to Princess Auto, pick up the things I need and we'll come back and start fabricating up some brackets so we get our big lift mounted. So now that I've got a piece of steel picked up to make some new brackets out of, I'm going to go ahead and cut out some pieces here so if I get the camera to focus on this for a second. If we look at what I have here in my hand, here are the brackets that were used before so they were bends up in the top here and then these tabs were welded on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out some more longer bottom pieces where the bolt goes. I'm going to cut these separate as well and just weld the entire thing up. Then also what I'm going to do is then I'm going to put in triangular pieces on the outsides here like this to offer extra rigidity. So I'll just use a bit of thinner plate to go on in a little triangle there. So I'm going to go ahead and start cutting out all my metal now and then we'll get down to actually welding these things up. So let's get to it. So as you can quickly see here now, I just went ahead and put bevels on all the uh, pieces that we're going to be welding together. That way we can get some great weld penetration all the way down through the material. Top piece, here are the two side pieces. So now that I got those beveled, I'll give them a quick wipe down with acetone and we'll go ahead and we'll get things jigged up and start doing some tacks. So let's get a quick wipe down done, go ahead and start welding some stuff up.
So hopefully the welding goggle, or the uh, plasma color goggle shots there work there. I'm going to unclamp this now to see how things are laying. It looks good. I'll get some tacks on the inside corners here. And then I'll get ready to set this up so we can put the feet on it. And once we get the first one done, we'll test fit it on the beam overhead to make sure it's all good. Then we'll look at adding our side bracing. And then we'll get ready to make the second one. It's nice and snug. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and lay beads on the inside here completely all the way across. And once I get those done, I'll set it back down over our little jig here and I'll get the beads on the outside and that should pull everything. So when I weld inside corners here, you should pull in a bit. And then when I go ahead and weld out the outsides, you should pull it back out again. I should get a nice snug fit. So I'll go ahead and finish welding this part out and then we'll look at continuing on to the next piece. So I've managed to get one of my new brackets done. So I'll first show you the old one here. So here's the old bracket. And now here's the new one that I just fabricated next to it. So it's gonna be the one and a half times wider, uh, the same depth and whatnot. So these are the same height and everything. Uh, and then I've got these extra bolsterings on each of the sides here. That should add a bunch of strength as well. So, I've got one done. I've got one more to do. So, I'll bring you guys back when I get my other one done and I'm ready to hang up the electric cable hoist. See you shortly. So, at this point, I've got the new brackets fabricated. I put a coat of primer and a coat of paint on those. So, as you can see, they're a lot beefier than these other brackets that I was using when we had the smaller electric cable hoist in place. So there are a couple of issues with the new lift. You know, I haven't even turned it on yet, but I'm pretty confident it's going to work. But the thing is, uh, first off, you can see the power cord on the old lift is nice and long. So it's like, it's definitely six feet long. The power cord on the new one is only about a foot and a half, two feet long. So the first thing I need to do is I need to extend this power cable on the new lift to be about as long as this one here. So what I'm going to do is I've just got some old extension cord that I keep around when I need conductor. So I'm going to cut this open, tear out some of the conductor, and patch that in to make this longer. Then we can tape that up and have it good and ready to go. And then the other thing is as well, once again, the switch for activating the new lift is really short. That's not going to reach down into the bottom part of my garage when the lift is up. Or when I'm down here and I want to go up on the lift or come down on the lift from up top. So you see on this one here I patched in a whole lot of conductor as well so I added an extra you know five or six feet to this one. Uh, I'd say this cable is at least eight feet. So I'm going to extend this one by another five feet so that way it hangs down far enough for me to grab this controller as well. So we'll do some fast forward, I'll quickly chop this up, do some soldering, get this taped up and once we get that done we're probably going to be ready to then mount one of these fancy new U-bolts into the top of the lift. Then we can put everything together and test it out and see how things are working. So, let's chop some of this cord up.
just one quick thing here before I get to uh, extending these leads. Uh, like a lot of things, when you're soldering stuff, prep is 90% of the work. Making sure what you're going to be soldering is clean, uh, pre-tinning your leads that you're going to be connecting, using flux. Flux is huge. This makes all the difference in the world. If you've ever tried soldering without flux, you'll know what I'm talking about. Stuff just doesn't want to take to uh, the conductor or whatever that you're soldering. Uh, so anyways, i got some heat shrink down here. I've got all these tinned. I've got these three leads here, or these three pieces of conductor tinned either side as well. So now I'm going to go ahead. We'll connect yellow to yellow, blue to blue, red to red, and we'll plug this in and test it out, make sure it's working. Then I'll probably go ahead and do the same thing with the controller. I'll do that off camera because you guys only need to see this once. And then it's time to install our new U-bolt. So I'm gonna finish this up and we'll see you guys once. So now that those are extended, I've got those all isolated so they're not going to touch. I haven't done any of the shrink wrap and stuff yet, so I just want to quickly plug the lift in and hit the button and make sure it's going to go. So first off, I get this tape off of the, uh, the wire itself, and this is going to be a state for sure. So here we go. Our extension is a success. So I'm going to go ahead and extend the controller as well. I'll bring you guys back once this is all buttoned up. So I just want to show you guys something quick. If you order one of these lifts, this is something you might want to look into yourself when you get it. Um, when I was testing that time, you might have saw at the very end there that this plastic piece actually got pulled down through the catch here. And as you can see right here, I'm actuating this and it's not touching this automatic shut off switch here. So the metal was actually bent. I don't know if that happened during shipping or what. But if I get my where do I lay my pliers to? Here, get my pliers on that maybe. And bend that out where it needs to be. There we go. Now our switch is actuating as it should. So now, if I go down, we're good. If I go up, and that kills itself with the switch. So be mindful of this, because I could have just pulled this right on in through the body of the... Uh, the lift if I wasn't careful or if I hadn't noticed that, that plastic piece had just popped through first off. Okay, anyways, we know our power connection is working. We got that extended. I'm going to button that up. We're going to go ahead and do the same with the controller. And then we should be good to put a new U-bolt on the lift. And then we're ready to get this all connected. So, forging ahead. So, after lots of soldering, and taping and heat shrinking, We've got the following situation. We've got a power lead now that's long enough for this to get plugged in up overhead into the uh, wall socket that's mounted up there on the wall. And we also got, so I'll plug that in. If I can find the end of my extension cord. So power there. And now we've got 
a lead as well for the controller. Extend it out nice and long so you can see there's you know eight to ten feet of that there as well. Click click down. Goes up and our catch is now working to turn it off automatically so we don't uh, go past the point of no return. So now that that stuff is done, we're ready to put a new U bolt on top of the lift frame itself. So let's zip over there, drill a couple holes. So now that our holes are drilled, you can see that the other holes are now slightly part of the new holes. I'm not too concerned about that. There's plenty of strength in this cross-sectionally anyways. It's not like that's going to be a weak point. It's going to break because there's actually a little bit of uh, metal missing there. But if we take our new bolt here now, pop that in place. There you go. You see we got a nice snug fit there now. So now that we know our new U-bolt fits nicely into our lift frame here, I'll go ahead and get the bolts put in this so it's secure, and then I'll go up overhead, we'll bring up our new hoist, we'll get that connected to the beam overhead, we'll get this all hooked up, and we'll test it out and see how things go. So now I've got a couple bolts in, getting the last couple in is hopefully a bit more easier than uh, what this has been like thus far, as you can hear by my panting. Either way, I'm going to get this thing all bolted up, we'll go ahead and we'll hook up the cable to the lift down below and we'll test it out. So here we go, connected directly to the U-bolt on the lift. up on the fucking ladder. Uh, let's see how fast this thing will go. Just a uh, single hook. I got a funny feeling it's going to be pretty quick compared to what it used to be. So here we go. So at this point I just want to Close off the video, once again recapping how we're going to be doing this giveaway. So the prize for this giveaway is my used, gently used, 880 pound electric cable hoist from Princess Auto. They paid like 250 bucks for this some four, three or four years ago. Uh, and it's served me solid ever since I installed it. So we've got the 880 pound cable hoist from Princess Auto. It comes complete with the catch block to double back through if you want to lift 880 versus the 440 single line. I'll throw my old U-bolt for a laugh. We've got our two brackets that connect to the hoist and attach it to whatever you want to attach it to. Now I use 2x4 steel and that's what these are for. Modify those or use those or use something else. Entirely up to yourself. It's going to be your lift. And then finally the mounting bolts to connect these brackets to the cable hoist. So just a quick recap on the rules of the contest. One, you need to be subscribed to the channel. Two, leave a like on the video. And number three, leave a comment as to how you would like to use this lift, how it will benefit you. 
in two months time, let's say. So today is November 11th, 2020. So on January 11th, 2021, I will randomly draw from the comments section and I'll record myself doing that so you see how it's done. There are a few sites that randomize or do random selection of the commenters on your videos. And if that commenter that gets selected has met those criteria, commented on the video for what they want to live for, like the video and are subscribed to my channel, then I will go the next step, get in contact with that person and line up getting this shit for them. So once again, I want to thank you guys for watching. Get your entries in for the contest and we'll see you in the next one. Cheers.